Wonderful. So this is your favorite radio host again, your only radio host, Corinne Lafont, on Between the Lines and broadcasting here from Trinidad and Tobago. It's a lovely, cool weather. It's a bit overcast, so it's kind of cool here right now. Um, not helping me with my cough, though, but hey, everybody's doing his own thing, right? So <laughs> that's right. <laughs> everybody's doing his own thing. So I'm here with Sue Montgomery, and I'm going to share a bit about Sue, and then we get straight into the recording. Sue was born in Texas, lived 30 years in Chicago before moving to Las Vegas, Nevada. She was a journalism major and freelance travel writer, collected ethnographic artifacts, maintained from Oceania and Africa. What an interesting life. Have written historical fiction, Whisper in the Blood, and its sequel, Honor in the Blood. Recently collaborated with a friend on a children's picture book, Itchy the Good, which you will see on the screen shortly, for three to seven year olds that was launched December mm -hmm. 17. Beautiful. And we're going to see Itchy the Good. And he's actually, I took the, the, the audio off. I'm going to make you hear him. Yes, that's Itchy the Good. Okay. I'll translate that for you. Not that I speak good, but I think he's saying hi. <laughs> <laughs> So here we are today, Sue. Tell us a bit about writing a children's book because that is something I've been playing around for some years now and it came back to me just yesterday, forgetting that you're going to be on my show today. And I'm, I actually started taking some notes down and ideas of children's books that I'm going to be writing because, you know, as they say, if you don't write it down, it just goes, right? So That's exactly right. Yeah. So Itchy the Goat and writing children's book with such a, colorful history, a, a past and experience of collecting artifacts from Oceania and Africa and being a journalism major and, you know, all these different things that you have done. You have switched over to, to being a children's author. What, what is the interesting thing about that? Well, my friend Two Bears Medina, actually Itchy the Goat was his pet when he was a child. And he had told stories about what that goat did all of his life. The, and it was pretty funny and fun. Mm -hmm. And he's all, everyone said he should write a book. And so he asked me to collaborate with him. Mm -hmm. So I said, great, I would love to. It would be a good diversion from what I had been writing. And the first thing we did was go to libraries and bookstores and look at children's books because writing a children's book may seem simple, but it's really not. It's kind of a, a hard task. Um, you need to find what's out there to look and see what's successful. You mm -hmm. don't want to write something that, you know, is out there particularly either. Mm -hmm. right. So, and to see how they are, are written. Mm -hmm. So we did all of that. I, obviously we had our, uh, topic and that should be a fairly fresh topic if we you can find one you know because you don't want to compete with a bedtime story such as Goodnight Moon uh, you want your story to be unique as possible and uh, so another thing that we found that we needed to do was the length of the story Children's picture books are not that long because, as you know, uh, little children's attention spans aren't that long. Yeah. So they should even really adult, be left. Even adults, too. Even adults. I think the children's attention span nowadays longer than the, than the adults. That's, that, that's true. But any, a children's picture book should really be less than a thousand words. Most run like 250 to 750, and uh, some are shorter usually like 32 pages to 36. So, you know, that's not very much in there. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, so then you have to decide how you're going to write the book. You know, some some children's books rhyme and others don't. Right. And um, if you, I think um, it has to come naturally, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Somehow we decided we wanted to write Brian Myers and maybe two heads are better than one, mm -hmm. but we actually uh, didn't have trouble rhyming. I think if you have to struggle to make rhymes, then you know it could just be written yeah. uh, in another way. 
I had a friend who said that she tried to write a children's rhyming book and she had a real, she couldn't do it. So I guess we were lucky that we were able to. And, uh, but one of the things that we, d I think is really important in a children's book are the illustrations. Oh. And uh, <clears throat> we found a young woman who is a sophomore art major at a college and her father and two bears had been uh, football coaches together. And we sent her pictures. We, although we had interviewed a couple of other illustrators, we sent her pictures and she drew some, the little goat and sent them back. And boy, she was the one. And she just did a super job of illustrating our story. I, it sort of adds, good illustrations really add, you know, a another dimension to the story and add a different level and uh, so we were very lucky to find such a wonderful illustrator i'm on your website with the authors and illustrate and i see an image here like mm -hmm. a sort of park uh, like a what a park with circus where they have all the rides right so she did she did that one yes she did the, the story is about uh the little goat's adventures at a fair where he, he goes and searches for a pal and ends up with an unexpected one. So it tells of his adventures uh, of all the things he sees at mm. the fair. And that's part, that's the roller coaster. Oh yeah. And, uh, it's kind of, it, yeah. Uh -huh. It's a fun story. We, uh, before we published, we did test it out on some children to see if it was boring or mm -hmm. fun, you know, yes, and yes. they seemed to like it, and yeah. uh, so we went ahead, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. In fact, it's the first of 10 stories we're planning to write about Itchy's adventures. And what about, why, why the name Itchy? Well, Itchy was the name of Two Bears Goat. When, when he was a boy, his real goat. <laughs> so, okay. And, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, itchy, itchy, you know, goat, goats are itchy, but uh, <laughs> I, we think itchy, itchy is a cute name, we think. And uh, he, it was a cute, cute goat. His, his parents brought it home from the fair for him. And so the story, the first story called Itchy the Goat, actually is passion and half truth. <laughs> because in the end, because in the end, a little Native American boy does uh, find itchy. Yeah. So it's yeah. What I what I what I like is that you went through a couple of steps for persons who have been thinking of writing children's stories, and you talk about you know writing down your ideas, deciding. Um, how you want it's like you have to you have to visualize now, I come from an art background and people like me who are artists you already see the end product before you even touch the brush so you already know what your final painting would be like what your final work should look like what what it what it should evoke what's the kind of response that you want people to have so if I'm a children's author I'm going to be thinking or want to be a, a children's author I'm thinking what would be what do, I, what do I want people to see about my book? And when I say people, it will obviously be the children, the target audience. But you have to realize when you're writing for children, you're also writing for the parents. Because once the children find out about the book, the parents are going to buy it. And they will be interested in, 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 in reading the book to see if it is um, safe, you know, what it teaches. So what are you going to be teaching in the book? What's the moral of the story? Would there be activities in the book? Of course, illustration, like you mentioned, is very critical because children are visual and so are adults. They are visual. And there are some books that even add the element of audio. Audio and that, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, audio and video. So probably you might have something on your website where they can go to and interact, you know, from the book to 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 uh, to the screen. You know, there are so many playoffs that can come from being a children's author. So you walk through the kind of steps to take. What, what, what's the moral of the story? What do you want to teach? Is it just about fun? 
is it is it just about what it is you know why are you really doing this particular book would it be a series is it just one standalone type of book you know well i don't yeah i don't think you need you can force a moral for a, a picture book mm-hmm. uh it can be subtle you know mm-hmm. it can teach a lesson or as you say it can be fun uh but there's usually something that can come from uh the book just like itchy he was looking for a friend at the fair so you know we all little children and adults need friends and uh, it's just a subtle uh subtly gives the message that way i think in our book uh other books will have various messages but they they don't really come right out and say it you know yeah. they're more subtle Or probably if she was lost or he lost his friend and he was trying to find his friend so on his journey <laughs> to find his friend he found a new friend and he learned new things along the way there could be so many you know angles to it exactly exactly and and but a lot of children have been to a fair they can relate to that and the fun that they had you know um uh, yeah. it's just a fun thing along the way That's and, right because a lot that, of children a lot of children get lost at fairs. You you were holding their hand one minute and next thing <laughs> you know, something else sparkly gets their attention and they're off and you don't know where they are. You know. That's it, true. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean even I get lost. I get lost. So <laughs> oh, so we can see ourselves in all those stories. So this is the main one. Do you do you plan on having like you said a series coming from it or, or yes yes we do it's in, in fact what we did with this first book we have a limited edition it, it's an interactive book that can only be purchased through the website but what it is is there's some misspelled words for little kids to find and there's a picture to color and they send it in to itchy and in return their colored picture will be on itchy's website and they will get a friend of itchy patch and we did it sort of as a test mm. and so we have had such good results with it that we're going to continue in some fashion uh having interactive books in all of the itchy books wow i love that and you see when it comes to children it 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 has to be interactive they they their motor skills you want to try and bring in all the different ways so the visual the audio you know the motor the feelings you know you you want them to really be involved you know right with the story with the characters even come up with their own ending how would you end the story so it helps them to to even start writing their own children's books kind of a thing exactly that's yeah. right exactly what would you have done you know mm-hmm kind of thing you, you know you want to get their imaginations going wild you know that's right and they certainly have good imagination for it's sure. great to... for sure uh-huh. that's the thing that we lose as we get older you know that's exactly right that's right so it it's fun to we've been reading the book to some of the children at schools you know and they really have a good time with it and we have a good time with them as well of course it's great being around children who wants to be around adults come on so <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> who wants that's, to adults be can be boring huh <laughs> <laughs> who wants to be around adults as, as the show said kids kids say the darndest things i mean they just they just talk they just say what's on that, their mind don't yeah. they <laughs> they they just they certainly do Yeah, they they don't care what you think. I mean, it's not that they're being personal about it. You know, they they just say what they see and what they feel and they ask what they want. You know, and they That's can right. be, and they can be persistent, you know, to make sure that they get a satisfied answer. So, you know, they they're not coming with any motives or agenda or any such thing. They just they just do their thing. They're living happily and It's so sad that as we get older we lose that but I don't think I've lost it. I think I I'm just grown in body because I can't help but be grown. It, it happens naturally. But I'm a child in a big body and I am not ashamed to say it. You know, people will tell me, "Corey, why don't you grow up?" and I'm like, "Why?" 
<laughs> that's right. Well, there are a lot of adults that haven't grown up, and that's good to ha still have the child within us, I think. Yeah. I'm like, why should I grow up? You know, and they look at me like, yeah. what, what a shocking answer. I'm like, why? You know, if, if, you have, <laughs> if you have a problem with it, I can't help you. You know, right. you're not, you're not <laughs> be my friend. You know, <laughs> right? You can't be my friend. I, I like hanging with children. They're just, they're just cool. They just, they're just fun, you know? That's true. They are. Certainly discovered lots of different different stories as we've read to our ch the children at the schools, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what, what I like about what you said is that you did your research, you go into the bookstores, you see what's there. You don't want to create something that already exists or you can put a different spin on what already exists, you know? So it 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 gives it adds value to what already is there. So it's it's good to go into the children's section, hang with the children, hear the things that they discuss, you know, and find out what's going on in their minds, you know. Exactly, exactly. Wow. Well, I'm seeing the people who have been involved in this. I'm showing it on your website here. Your Native American Two Bears Medina. I mean, Native Americans always have these lovely names: Two Bears, this moon, that moon. That I just love it. <laughs> yeah. And then you with your simple name. You could have been something else. You're just Sue Montgomery. He's two bears Medina. You know. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then Nicole Hastings, the illustrator, a very young, beautiful woman. That's nice. It would be great to be in contact with her. Do you have a do you have a contact for her? So if persons want to have a look at her work, I can I can help promote her as well. Uh, well, basically, it's just on our, our website is all, uh, you know, I don't know if she has anything. I don't think she has anything on her website as, as to what she's done or illustrated. She This is her first venture in the illustration world, I think. And, uh, but she's very good. And uh, okay, great. Ex cap captured little Itchy just like we wanted him. <laughs> Oh, beautiful, beautiful. It's great to hear that because, you know, I tend to collect a lot of resources. People will come to me or, you know, they want to get their book done and I want to be able to refer them to persons who I think are good. And, you know, I'm going to check out Nicole, you know, and see what, what she has. Right. Well, our book, our book is now available uh, through our website as well as Barnes and Noble and Amazon, and we also have an iBook that's available. So we have a little bit of it's available a lot of places, and it's it's fun. Yeah, I see the one on your website takes me to our PayPal checkout page. I'm gonna go back here. I'm not seeing where it's on this itchy the goat where it's available on Barnes and Noble. It just takes me. To uh, well, it, really? Uh, well, it is. Um, I don't know. Maybe I haven't <laughs> looked at the website. I guess in a while. Uh, mm. I'm not the one that really created that, but I thought Barnes and Noble was on there. Mm. Is it just is it just itchy the goat dot com that is the only website, or is there another one? Uh, that's the only website, but we do have, um, he does have a Facebook page, you know, just Itchy the Goat. <laughs> yes, well, keep the same branding, keep the same branding. Very good, right. very good. But well, this is awesome, right. you're doing great, so I expect to see more from you soon. Well, thank you, yes, we're going to have more, and they're going to be really fun and cute and um Kids are, and the parents both are going to really love them. Well, I can tell you this. When I come out with my own children's books, I'm definitely going to share them with you and you can let me know what you think. Oh, that would be great. I would love to do that. That's awesome. So, so Sue, I, I am so pleased to have you on my show. And thank you for asking me. Of it's course. It's been a pleasure. I mean, it's, it's been a coming and a going and a coming and a going because it's been from <laughs> yeah. one thing to the next and... No, I have the flu and all of that and this horrible cough, which I'm trying to get rid of this week or today. <clears throat> so I thank you so much for being patient with me and, and introducing me to Itchy the Goat. I would clearly be looking out for this book and, and showcasing it. And, you know, I, I have a video here of, of our recording, so it will be seen and people will be able to see it. 
And um, I really appreciate the time and, and you know, sh your sharing. Well, thank you and good luck with your book. Thank you so I'll be much. Be anxious to see it. Yes. yes. Yes, me too. So thank you so much and you have a blessed day. Uh -huh. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye.